Hey guys, this is Gunner, and welcome to the Cryptid Creatures Podcast. As I'm sitting out there, I'm starting to hear knocks and things going on in the woods. And I go back in when they take a break, and I talk to Kane. I said, do you see anything out here? Do you guys have any activity? Because I've never been to his, his uh, cabin before. Teens like, yeah, we got some activity always. They, they come from back here. You'll hear them knocking. Um, they'll come over this way. You may hear mouth pops. Richard and I are face to face talking, and all of a sudden, a light kicks on behind us. Richard puts his water out and points right at my shoulder and says, There's a Bigfoot. This is the Cryptid Creature Show. I am Brian, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Todd. What's up, buddy? Hello, my friend. Tonight's show, we have a special episode. We are bringing on a co-host. We are. Yeah, we're She's bringing, one of our Patreons. Bring on a co-host who's a Patreon subscriber, and if you guys go to subscribe at the, the certain levels, uh, you can come on and be a co-host as well. And we're going to have Robin Schultz come on and help us interview our guest tonight that's right and our guest tonight is todd i think this is the first todd we've had is it not maybe yeah yeah i mm-hmm. believe it is yeah we've had some brian's and some ryan's yeah. now we have another todd all right well let's go see what's going on with todd i know he was with right uh he was with rich remember the rich and the the guy that we talked to that had the pit in ohio i think it was oh, yeah, talking hills yep. So he was mm-hmm. one of the guys that was with him and during one of those encounters. So we're going to bring him on talk to oh, him. Oh, this ought to be good then. Yeah. And Robin's going yeah. to be co-hosting with us. So we'll yeah. bring them both on and get this rolling. What do you say? Well, this is a treat for all of everybody tonight. Let's get him. Hey, Todd, how you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Hi, everybody. Todd, welcome to the show. We got Robin, our guest co-host tonight. Who, uh, Hi, Todd. She was on episode 127, so she's going to join us tonight and and uh, talk to you about your encounter and everything that you've been you've mm-hmm. been experiencing. So can't wait to hear it. It's yeah. it's uh, hopefully it's a good story for you guys. <laughs> Go ahead and take us into it. Let's not waste any time. What do you say? Yeah, jump okay. right in. Um, well, I, I have a little bit of lead in into it because of how it came about. Um, as you probably, guys probably know, I'm a I'm a researcher. I've been researching just for a couple of years. Um, I joined in with. Um, Rich McCandlish, excuse me. I joined in with Rich McCandlish and um, about two years ago, I, I, I met him and um, at a campground. I'm a back, uh, my background's a, a wildlife photographer and a nature photographer um, on the side. And you know, I'm a hobbyist. So just happened to bump into Rich and we got to talking and he, he asked me what I did for a living. And I said, well, you know, for a living, I do this, but you know, I'm, I'm a background uh, hobbyist with uh, photography. And he said, really, I, uh, you know, I do research for uh, Bigfoot. And he said, are you interested? And I'm like, oh, yeah. So we started talking. And uh, some of the things that he showed me kind of got me interested. I said, well, you know, I said, well, if you could get me some images like you're showing me with his old flip phone, I said, I think I could get you a lot better images um, out there. And so one of the things that we did, we got together and we started researching and with uh, with that, we were out actually the day that I saw uh, my Bigfoot, uh, we were out researching. Uh, I have a group together called HCCR, um, Hocking County Cryptid Researchers, the group of our group. And there's another group within Hocking County, Ohio, here that does research. And the, the, there's a gentleman's name is Michael Kane and his partner, Eric. And we invited them to go out with us that day. Um, to do a research in the area we call the pit. And the pit was a hot active area that um, we've been doing our most of our research in. And uh, we went out there that day, did a lot of research. And now with Hawking County Crypto Researchers, we also have a gentleman that works, that is uh, with us, and he is a videographer. Uh, his name is David Wolf. And he um, walks around with us do, doing the videos. I do a lot of photography and research, you know, uh, the area along with the rich. So we researched that day. We had a lot of uh, research to go over. And on the way out, uh, they had mentioned that they wanted to do some videos and, and some um, David had wanted to do some uh, recordings with uh, Richard and Kane together. So Kane invited us back to his cabin, which is deep in the hills of Hawking County. 
and we went back there and um, while they're in there doing the videoing and you know, we didn't get started till late. So it's about nine, 10 o'clock when we got started with the video editing um, or recording, they went on doing a side by side video and which kind of left me sitting out in the, uh, on the porch by myself. Eric didn't go with us. It was just Kane, uh, Dave and uh, Rich in the house doing recording. And as I'm sitting out there, I'm starting to hear knocks and things going on uh, in the, in the woods. And I go back in when they take a break and I talk to Kane. I said, do you see anything out here? Do you guys have any activity? Cause I've never been to his, his uh, cabin before. He didn't, Kane's like, yeah, we got some activity always. They, they come from back here. You'll hear them knocking. Um, they'll come over this way. You may hear mouth pops. And he goes, I got a little piece of tin uh, further down in the woods here that uh, every once in a while when they go by that, they'll smack it. You'll hear uh, uh, a tin roof being smacked. So I'm out there listening hearing different things and um, about a couple hours go by just hearing things on and off. They uh, finish up with their, re- their, uh, their recording of those two. And then uh, we go in, we took, they take a break and then David decides he wants to do a one-on-one uh, recording with Kane. So Richard and I go out on the porch. Now the porch is a deck that's standing about 12 feet on top of Kane's garage and it's level with the house. And where I'm sitting is behind me is the driveway heading out. Richard's on the other side of me, uh, probably about three feet away. And we're just sitting there, lights out completely, no lights anywhere other than the light in the house where we're doing the recording. And we're just sitting there talking. This goes along for about, no, no, we're out there 10 minutes. And Richard and I are face-to-face talking. And all of a sudden, a light kicks on behind us. And not realizing that, you know, there was a motion sensor light there. We didn't know that. I asked Richard, I said, why did he kick the light on? And I looked over and I could see in the house and they're still in there doing video recording. So about that time, Richard about spits his water. He's taking a drink of water. About spits his water out and points right over my shoulder and says, there's a Bigfoot. So I stand up and I turn around and I'm looking and about, and we, we measured this later, 98 feet away, standing beside a tree, there was... And I'm I I'm looking. Of course, I'm 12 feet up in the up in the air. And being a, a photographer, I'm always looking at animal height here in Ohio. You know, we got deer's and a few bears here and there. So I'm looking at that height. Rich has always told me, "Don't look down. You look up." And so as I'm looking down, I see these two big black tree trunks sit, standing beside this tree, and just huge and and hairy. And I start to scroll my eyes up. I'm going, I see him. And just as my eyes go up, I can see the outline of the body. And then the light shuts off. Now, we were excited about that. Richard and I are standing there. And I said, I didn't get to see his face. I didn't. I got to see the bulk and the build of him. And um, we were, of course, got all excited about it. Went running in to uh, interrupt uh, David and uh, Kane. And one of the things that... uh, they, of course, they're like, hey, we're in here recording. I'm like, well, you're in here talking about Bigfoot. We're out here looking at him. So we all go outside, and we're standing four abreast on, on the deck, and we're standing there explaining to them what, what we saw, what happened. And as we're standing there, an acorn comes in, lands on the deck railing, and hits Kane right in the chest. And we're and it's pitch black out. We don't have lights on, and we're standing there looking at each other. So we get, we're like, well, what was that? We, we get our flashlights out. We look down. There's an acorn right there by our feet. When we pick it up, we're like, well, there's no acorns above us, and it came in at an angle. So we're standing there and like, all right, well, we're starting to get interaction with them. So we're now we're getting excited even more, and we're sitting there talking to them, and here comes another. Uh, I don't know if it was an acorn or, or a piece of gravel at this time. And it actually hits the top of Kane's cabin. Kane's got a uh, metal roof, so you can hear it. So David goes in the house, gets his other video camera. He's got a uh, night nighttime video camera. He goes out there and he's down, runs to the ground uh, driveway, and he starts filming it, looking up in the woods. And we here comes another rock. So we're trying. He's trying to find it out in the woods. And actually, and later uh, when we go back through and review the video, you can actually see one of the rocks being thrown over uh, his head. And so this goes on probably about twenty minutes. We were, we were getting rocks tossed at us. Now, Kane and I go out back because we hear rocks being thrown out back along with um, rocks hitting the front of the house. So we go out back, and Kane and I are hearing 
rocks being thrown every once in a while to, and hitting the back of the house. And the same thing, they're getting rocks thrown and hitting the front of the house. And like I said, this goes on for about 20 minutes, and then it just calms down. Now, uh, in the meantime, Kane did have a uh, a new FLIR camera that he had uh, recently gotten. And he went ran in the house and grabbed that, and he's looking up in the woods through that. He said he did get some copies of some motion. He, he uh, didn't catch it right away because he said he thought he had set it on. Um, apparently, you can set the heat sink to be red or white. He thought he had it set it on red, and he... Uh, realized later it was set on where anything he saw heat was white. And so when he went back and looked at the recording, he actually saw movement of some heating heat signatures up in the uh, woods there. Now his house is surrounded by woods. So we go in and we're, we're gathered around out back, I should say. And um, for about two or three more minutes, we're around just sitting there talking. And we said, okay, what normally are they looking for? What kind of reaction are they looking for? And they said, well, what was what would people, normal people do? Well, a lot of them would just go in, shut the doors, and turn all the lights on. Well, we said, well, let's let's change that up. Let's go turn all the lights out and go, let's go out and sit on the front porch. So we went, turned all the lights out, went out on the deck, and we were sitting there. Um, I was uh, sitting pretty close to where I was sitting before. I wanted to get a better angle, so I was sitting off to the left on a stool. And um, we're sitting there talking. And about 20 minutes later, we start hearing footsteps behind us and we didn't, didn't get up, didn't do anything. We just stood there and, and I could hear them. And we counted 17 uh, steps coming across from my right side and about to where the driveway was. He's got a gravel driveway. I didn't hear any more steps. And about a minute or two later, I heard the more steps off to my left leading down the hill. So that was, uh, that was the end of the interaction. Uh, we didn't have any more interaction that night. Uh, with that, but it was great to see my first Bigfoot. Um, you know, I, when I first met Rich, that was one of my things. I said, Rich, if I go into this with you full-fledged, um, am I going to see a Bigfoot? And his first comment was not, will you? It's when will you? It's if, not if, it's when. So it, it was uh, and it was about a year to the day um, from the day I met Richard to the day that that, that happened. And uh, that was, so that was my first experience of actually seeing it. And, and to that day, when I first saw him, the first thing that came to my mind, everybody's skeptic. Everybody's a skeptic until they see it. And that was the first thing that came to my mind was they are real. I can't believe it. They are real. And um, we went back out the following weekend. We asked, we got a hold of Kane and said, hey, do you mind um, if we come back out and try to do some measurements? So what we did, um, the swing I was sitting on, had a metal bar above it to where it had like a canopy it would hold and Kane didn't have it on there, but there was a bar up there. And Rich said what he did when he saw the Bigfoot, when I stood up to turn and look, he put his head on that Bigfoot and he goes, there was a limb coming from another tree. Um, and he'd line that up with the eyes of that Bigfoot. When I saw the legs, there was a limb coming up, crossing um, the thighs of it. So, we said, with that, we can probably get a good calculation of how tall he was because it was a pretty big, tall Bigfoot, big, thick. I mean, his shoulders on it, his body was, it put a football player to shame you know, with the width of the shoulder. <laughs> we went out there, uh, Kane Lowes come out, and we took a six-foot ladder, and I took a, we took a string from that uh, bar that Rich had put his, his head on, and I tied it off to that bar, and I, we drug it down and tied it off to that tree, and I kept moving it up to where Rich thought it was the the height of where the eyes were. I couldn't get it up. I stayed on top of a six-foot ladder, and I couldn't reach it high enough up. So I had Rich come down. He could, He's a little taller. He's like 6'2", and um, he was able to get it up another inch or two higher. And we feel, we feel we got pretty close to where the eyes were on that Bigfoot, on the height of that tree. I measured from there down to the ground, 14 foot, eight inches. Now that was just to the eyes. You still probably had another six to eight inches, especially with their dome head, um, to the top of that, that Bigfoot. And so it's probably a 15 foot Bigfoot. And, and uh, Rich is saying, you know, that's one of those that's an alpha, alpha male um, Bigfoot. He says not very many of them run around, at least not in Ohio. Is You know, um, one of the things that here's my Bigfoot, my first Bigfoot, and it was an alpha male. And this thing was just huge. Now, in addition to that, 
three or four weeks later, Kane had some activity going on down there um, on Friday night. He called us back and said, you know, hey, this has got going on. I talked to him that Friday night. I said, you know, I'll come down there. He said, no, Eric's on his way, his partner. So we went down that Saturday morning and we found 24 inch tracks. And we also found, I think the other ones were 15 inch tracks all around the house. So, um, and I've got, we've got pictures of those too. So he's have activity there. And for that to be a 24 inch track pretty much matches the height of what we saw. So it's probably the same Bigfoot that was hanging around there for a while. So that was, that was pretty interesting. And, and uh, it's still exciting. I can still see it today in my mind. And I'm still excited today as, as I was the day, you know, I saw it, how big it was and that I finally, you know, I got to see my real, my first Bigfoot and, you know, being out in the woods all the time, um, being a, a wildlife photographer, I was a hunter for many, many years in Ohio. You know, you hear it all the time. I, I've hunted out of these woods all, you know, all my life. I've never seen a Bigfoot. Well, so do I. But it took me to look for one, to be out looking for it, to find it. Those, they're, they're just elusive, you know, best hide and seek player in the world, I guess. <laughs> so that that's, uh, I mean, that's my story. Um, I can, we could do a lot more, you know, about the different things that we've done. Um, but that's the only one I've seen. Well, Todd, I've got a question for you. I was, sure. um, well, a couple questions, I guess. I was remembering you talked about um, that Bigfoot was throwing acorns from at the front of the house, and then also something was being thrown at the back of the house. Do you think there was more than one? Yes, yes, I do. Um, especially the second time when we went back out, and we were finding two sets of prints. But there was definitely activity going on both at the same time, the front of the house and the back of the house. And Keen, uh, I think Keen said he was actually seeing heat signatures on both sides, um, wow. uh, the front and the back. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure there was two of them there. I didn't see them. I saw the one. I didn't see the other. But I definitely was there when, when the uh, activity was going on where we were getting uh, rocks thrown at us. Like yeah. gravel, pebbles, enough to make, uh, when they hit the house, enough to make it, you know, to get your attention. Well, when you actually saw that big guy, did you have a, a physical reaction of any kind? Um, you know what? I, I was surprised. I was just, it was a, a just a big calm. I, you know, I looked down, I was like, wow, they are real. I mean, it, it's just, it was just, I wasn't, it wasn't nervous. Um, I was, you know, overly excited. It was just all of a sudden, there he was. And uh, it's not like we were out looking and inspecting him either. You know, I didn't have my camera gear. Of course, this, two, this was about two in the morning when this happened. Didn't have my camera gear. Of course, I can't photograph at night, but uh, didn't have, we didn't have anything set up. And we were just out there sitting down, having a good time and having a discussion about, uh, we we're actually discussing about him and Kane finally getting together and doing the research together. And that, that's what happened. That, that turned, you know, turned the activity turned on and wow. And it, like I said, it went on for about 20 minutes, my guess. And then it just died off. Well, that's exciting that he decided to show himself to you guys. Yeah. We think, we don't think he got, um, we think what happened was he got busted by that light because afterwards we tested why that light kicked on. It was motion sensor light, um, 10 feet away from the wall, that light wouldn't kick on. We were doing everything we could to, to, to kick that light on. 10 to 15 feet away, nothing. Now, remember, he was 98 feet away, so he definitely didn't kick that on. We think what happened was he was about to cross that driveway, and maybe a bat, um, a moth, or something went by that oh, sensor okay. mm -hmm. and kicked that light on. And that's and Rich, he was just standing still. He didn't move. He he was he was frozen the whole time that I saw him, which was only if, you know three or four seconds at the most. It was just enough time for me to get my eyes on him, see the legs. I saw the hair on the legs, so that's what I focused on. And then as soon as I started to raise my head up, the light went out. So I got to see the build, the silhouette of the body, but the the to, for me to get the details of the body wasn't there. Uh, wasn't the light wasn't on him long enough. But Rich saw him right away, and he said, actually, he had his eyes closed because they do have eye shine because he thinks that he was smart enough, intelligent enough to say, hey, there's a light. I'm closing my eyes because they want to see eye shine. And, but he didn't move. He was as still as that tree. And as soon as the light went off, he was gone. Now, 
Rich and I, after many, many discussions, think that actually what happened was instead of him like running off, um, he just stepped back into the woods. He maybe mm-hmm. stepped back about 10 feet and um, he, not expecting, you know, maybe expecting us to turn a light on, not not sure what we would do. Um, but we were running in the house and got the guys and, and brought them out. And that's where and that's where the acorn came from. I mean, we're standing right there looking at where we saw him at. And here comes this acorn. And, um, you know, like I said, it, it, it he threw it in. It hit the rail in front of the uh, in front of us. And it came up and hit the cane in the chest and it's dropped to the floor. We're like, well, what was that? So, you know, once we figured out it was an acorn, within another minute or so, here comes a rock. And so, that, you know, like I said, we were getting very excited about it. And um, with uh, David, um, David Wolf, I don't want to just throw out, you know, um, David, but uh, he has video of this and he has a website called exposingthestrange.com. And also on our HCCR page, you can go and look at his videos and there's actually, you can actually see that video is on there and you can see the, um, there's a spot where Dave's down on the ground, filming up, filming up into the woods um, it, with the low light uh, camera. So it's in black and white, infrared. And you can see at one point a, a rock being tossed. At first we thought it was just a butterfly or not a butterfly, a moth. But then we went back and slowed it down. You could actually see it's a stone being thrown, and um, you could actually hear them hit the hit the house in that. <laughs> so it's you know that stuff is there, and uh, so it's, it's pretty pretty interesting, and uh, it was pretty exciting to see that. I guess so. So not only did I get to see him, we got to, I got to interact with him. You hear about interaction all the time, um, and so I got to do both. I got to see him for the first time and interact with him for the first time. Very cool. That was it. Was very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah, that rich guy, Rich McClandish, that is I think that's how he pronounced his last name. That guy is just yeah. out there with these Bigfoots. Like this guy is so involved. He is in, in that area called the pit. And we've yeah. talked about that before with him on here. And so you've been to the pit and you've experienced some things there as well. Yes, I have. Um been in the pit many times. That's our mostly where we research at. And um about this time last year, we actually um had permission to go and stay the night in the pit. And um, we stayed the night in the pit one evening and um, we had a little bit of activity, nothing really um, to say that we, you know, we had a Bigfoot come in. One of the things we were doing some experimenting at that point, too, uh, with trail cams. We, we have a theory uh, with trail cams and this is Rich's theory. He, he's the one turned me on to it. I don't want to throw him under the bus. He, he definitely brought this to my attention. They can see the infrared somehow. And I think that they can see the they have a broader spectrum of vision of of light than we do. And um, I did some research on the trail cams, and the the triggers are IR, and uh, of course the the flashes are IR. And um, so what we did that night is we set out, um, we put our backs to. There was actually a cave at the pit, a small cave. We actually put our backs to the cave, and we went out and set trail cams up in a zigzag portion to where they were crossing each other around us on either side of us. Um, and so our goal there was to try to see if anything would come in and if it would come in through the, through the cameras. And um, we had some things come in that we could see uh, with the infrared. Um, nothing would come through the cameras. Now, when I say things, there were just small images. Um, nothing I can say was a Bigfoot or anything like that. Uh, but we did have one image. Um, the pit is called the pit because it's got like 40 foot walls pretty much all the way around us. Um, it is, it's basically a canyon. And um, where we're sitting at, you can see the ridge of the other side. It's not a very wide canyon, um, but it, you can see the ridge of the other side. And we're seeing something move up there on that side. And we have this um, on the floor uh, that we uh, actually have video of it coming through the woods there. And it was walking towards us. And it was, we thought, oh, it's a bear. Um, when you look at it, the way it was swaggering, the way it was walking, um, we saw, okay, there's a bear coming down through, through the woods. But then it turned sideways, and it had a huge tail on it. And, like, something that big that swaggers like a bear does that has a tail, and it's a big tail, and it's fluffy. Uh, not, you know, not like a... Um, a lion, you know, a mountain lion or, or a bobcat. Bobcat has little tails. But uh, the size of it and the way it swaggered when it was walking and then when it gave us that little bit of a turn, it's only about a three-second video, but it's uh, definitely when it turned, we're like, okay, 
that's not a bear. Don't know what it is. We got some ideas, but we don't know what it is. And um, that that was we didn't go up to see if we could get any trail uh, tracks off of it because it was a lot of it was this time of year a lot of leaves down up on that area, uh, mostly you know overcast or uh, have a canopy overhead with with uh, leaves, and so it was covered with leaves with a lot of dirt up there. So we decided not to go up and see if we can find any trails. Um, in the morning, but uh, it, it came in, swatched it a little bit through the video, and it went to our right, and we didn't hear anything any, hear anything after it um, about that. So, But we did get some uh, infrared video of that, and I think that is also on David's site. If not, it's on King Michael's uh, site. Okay. Wow. You're listening to The Cryptid Creature Show. If you're a fan of the show, go and check out our new Patreon site. You'll get access to our private Discord server, exclusive merchandise, access to all live streams and Q&As, discounts on merch from The Cryptid Creature store, and get a chance to be a guest host during one of the show's recordings. Just go to www.patreon.com slash crypticcreatures1. Thank you for listening and supporting the show. You made an interesting comment about the infrared that maybe they can see the infrared. And that makes a lot of sense now to me with the trail cams and why they're good at avoiding them, destroying them. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I did a lot of video watching, a lot of YouTube watching, um, trying to see when I first got into this, because that was a big thing I did. I went out and bought like 20 trail cams. And Rich was like, I think you're wasting your money, but, you know, let's do the research. Um, I put a lot of trail cams up you know, we get a lot of image of deer and this and that, but nothing, um, would come in. And, um, every time we went out to the pit, I would put trail cams up and we would see, we actually found, uh, uh, new claw marks on the tree. Um, we went out one Saturday, we would go out Saturday night, Saturday evening. We, we would try to go to the pit during midday. We didn't go out there too early. Didn't go out there too late. Um, but we would go out, probably try to be there by two. So I would go out and set the trail cams up um, on a Saturday, let them sit overnight, go get them Sunday morning or Sunday, you know, when we'd go out there about 11 or 12. That Saturday, we set trail cams up and there was an area down in the pit where there's some structure going on and they got some things uh, going on. It could be human putting it there, could not, but it's been there the whole time I've been there and there's things always added to it and taken away from it. But there is human traffic that goes go, go down through there. So we're just saying, okay, well, let's, you know, mark it off to that, but we'll keep an eye on it. So I was looking to at a place to put a trail cam that day to cover that area, and it just wasn't a spot I could put a trail cam and keep it hidden. The next day we came back, I noticed on that tree that I was looking around on that structure, there was fresh claw marks going down that tree and they were 13 inches wide at the beginning at, at the furthest point and they narrowed down to about six inches it looked like something had just reached up and scraped it um it was so fresh that there was little bits of bark just barely hanging on there and if he would touch it, it would fall so it had to happen sometime between the time i was there saturday because it wasn't there saturday and it wasn't but it was there sunday morning now also that that night saturday night especially with the video, the camcorders I had it going on or the trail cams. Um, when I was going through them, I noticed a storm had gone through um, and a lot of wind, a lot of heavy wind and going through the, and triggering the trail cams and, and things like that. So if that wind was going through that heavy, it more likely could have blown those little things off the, the, the tree that I was touching that the little trail barks. So, that storm went through, I think it was like 2.30 in the morning. So from like 2.30, maybe 3 o'clock when it calmed down to the time we got there, that those claw marks had to happen. And that's just speculation because uh, we don't have any time stamp of any creatures. That was the other thing. I had six trail cams up that day and nothing caught anything. But yet there was fresh claw marks. Now, since then, we found um, another set of claw marks just like that. Um, that wasn't there, but we found them about a quarter mile well, maybe a couple hundred yards, I guess, um, downstream from where we found those. And uh, in a different area, part of the pit, it's more of the open flatland area. And uh, we, we recently found those down there. So we got two two sets of markings, almost identical, and they're, they're about the same width. And people say, well, it could be bear, because we do have bear, black bear running around, but those are not a bear marking 
on those, not the way that they were they were designed, not the way they were set. Bear markings, black bears would usually get up there and scrape up and down. These were coming right, like it looked like something reached up and it was pulling itself up the little cliff that was right there. And we have pictures of that also, you know, on our site. So, do you think that was Dogman? Not real sure. Um, we we do know that there was Dogman been seen in that area. Um, you know, we're mostly Bigfoot researchers, but we call ourselves uh, Hocking County Cryptid Researchers because, you know, if you're out researching, you're going to run into anything. And uh, we have found many, many signs of Dogman, especially down there. We've got Dogman tracks. Um, we've got uh, Rich has got some pictures that we haven't opened to public yet, but he's got some private pictures of Dogman that is right there at the pit. And Rich has got a story that uh, he told me that he ran into a dog man at the pit before him and I met up. Um, okay. So I, I think he talked about that on the story. So, yeah, uh, definitely so we get some dog man activity in the Hawking County area. And um, we actually have Richard has released a picture that he had uh, from his library uh, it was before I met up with Rich. Um, but one of his library picks of a dog man that, they, they, that was taken with a uh, special trail cam that he had gotten from a military friend of his. Wow. I'm looking and, forward to seeing that. Yeah, that's actually out there. It's on our site. It's also um, the North American Dogman Project. Uh, Jody Cook has, uh, they've looked at that image and have uh, verified it's an image and they actually have it on their website also. That's amazing. So in the evening, did you hear anything out there? We did. We did. Uh, we didn't hear any howls. Um, we could hear some things on and off. I, would, I wish we could spend many, many evenings out there. But uh, we actually had, we did hear some things. We had something crawling around the cave on top of us. Uh, we could see the heat signature. Um, it was probably about the size, what we could tell, maybe uh, about the size of a, cat, a big cat out there. Um, and I don't mean a feline house cat. I'm, I'm talking about maybe a bobcat or something a little bit bigger. Um, but we didn't get a good view of it. We just, we could hear it um, through the cave that we were looking at. There was a crack that went all the way straight up and you could see all the way through it. And um, at one point they actually saw it moving through there on, with the flur. You could see it pass by up there. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing came down. Um, nothing came in close uh, through the trail cams. Back to the trail cams. Um, with the infrared, that's some of our uh, research that we've done. We think that they can see the, the spectrum in it. What I was doing before, when Rich and I first started getting, talking about this, the tr the videos I was looking at, if you go back and you do a lot of YouTube video searches of, of Big, Bigfoot, the ones that are caught on trail cam are typically, if you look, during the day. And that to me, that makes sense if the daylight infrared is going to flood out the infrared triggers enough to where they can't, you know, it, it doesn't look like it's a trigger going through uh, an infrared beam or anything going through the, at night. Um, it's going to flood it out to where maybe they're not, it, they're not noticing what it is, and that's where they're getting caught um, on trail cams that are during the day. There's not too many that I've seen come in there at night. Now, the ones that have come in that, that I've seen come in, uh, our night shots, they're very, very close to the trail cams. And to me, that uh, my theory is that they don't see those beams because maybe they're on the other side of a tree. And then when they come around the tree, they trigger it and it's catching a shoulder or it's catching a, a, a you know, a hip or whatever. Um, and so they don't get the uh, busted with the, the beam until they get, get around there. Then they know not to go over there and, and they notice there's no other further pictures of them walking past it. So I, I think that um, that's the case on that. It's just a theory. It's a working theory we're still looking into. But, um, you know, a lot of people out there testing trail cams and uh, different ways of doing it. Uh, King Michael has some good stories about his trail cams, um, especially when he finds them beat up so bad that, you know, there's just pieces of them. Oh, no. So, yeah, now, not, none of that has happened to mine. Fortunately or unfortunately, because, you know, be lucky. Yeah. that happens. You might, might get a chance to find an SD card with it on there. But, uh, you know, we we feel that the trail cams is a good uh, a good theory, that they're good to use for trail, you know, to be out there. But if you're looking for Bigfoot, uh, I think they're going to see that, that, that infrared and stay away from them, especially at night. I believe it. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, it's it's just a good theory. That. Yeah, that would make more sense that they <clears throat> wouldn't be able to see that during the day. Yeah. Also, thanks for the lesson on how to use the trail cams. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that the uh, using the trail cams as a trap. You know, that was a that was a good theory. Um, been that been nice if we would have had something a little bit big that we could see from a distance that would come in. Um, but yeah, to see if they would come break that trap. I mean, we've done that a couple times now, um, different different evenings, different things, and uh, no results. Not saying that something would have came in, but definitely something didn't come in when they were out there. I was on Mount Hood this last summer and had a couple trail cams set up, um, but at night I did I did get a bear coming through and and uh, some deer, but but nothing else. But n- never did try to set them during the day. So next year when I'm backed up back up there, I'll yeah. do that. Well, not yeah. now, Robin. Yeah, yeah, just them go. Traps. yeah, leave them out there for as long as you can. Let them go through yeah. the day and the night and see what you can get. Thank Especially you. Especially on Mount Hood. Yeah. Yeah. The hot spot, I know. Mm-hmm. I saw a sign. There was no doubt, um, but never did act. Nobody showed themselves. <laughs> Todd, when you had your first encounter there with Rich, did you notice any smell? No. And that's something that Rich and I have discussed many times. And we're not saying it doesn't happen. We just know that, you know, our most we focus our research in central in uh, Hawking uh, County, Perry County and Fairfield County. That's where we focus. Our, we will get invited out to other locations. We'll go, but that's where we do our focus. So I can say that we have never had um, that smell. Um, even when he's 98 feet away from us and there was another one in the woods somewhere because they were throwing rocks at us. Um, we just, we don't, haven't had that smell. I have not smelled it. Rich it says, you know, he's been researching for 50 years and he's seen more uh, than he can count. And um, he's, he's never never had that smell. So I can say that, you know, the ones that here um, that, that we've run into in, in the Hawking County area, we, we haven't, seen, haven't run into that smell. I've heard that. I've, you know, we've talked about it because I have heard it. And um, others have discussed it with us. And they're like, yeah, you know, we've been out and we could smell a smell. Like, well, okay, well, you know, where we're at, we, we, we've never smelled it. We've got signs of them all around. Um, but that night definitely didn't have a smell and there was no wind, you know, that night it was a good evening, just a, you know, a good still evening, beautiful night out. And, uh, just, well, you guys, you guys are probably out there so often and they're probably just so used to you. They don't need to use that. Uh, uh that could be, you know, that could to, be. Yeah. To run you guys off. Cause they know you're not out there to cause them any harm or anything, yeah. anything you know, to, we're, we're out there just to, to, to check them out. Um, mm-hmm. we, right. and we go out as as often as we and, can. And again, they probably know that by now since, yeah. You know. Yeah. Since we stay in the same areas. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the, the other things that Rich's theory is, you know, we, we stay in the same areas that get used to you. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, there was, there was one evening, um, and we don't know what it was, but Rich and I went out and we call it the back 40, um, where we go at, uh, one of the other areas, not the pit, but we call it the back 40. And we're out one evening and uh, we hear a howl and we, we have our audio recorders out and we didn't plan on going for uh, a long research. We're just like, Hey, let's go out in the back for a little bit. So <clears throat> we're out back there and um, walking a, a trail slowly, you know, it's 11, 12 o'clock at night. And um, we start walking down through the trail and we hear off in the distance, a howl. And like, oh, there's, you know, something going on, some activity out further. And the rich said, if that's true to form, we'll hear a closer one. And sure enough, there was a closer one. So then we started hearing things like, well, let's let's go see if we can find out where that's coming from. So we actually set our audio recorder down in front of my truck. My truck windows down, everything, you know, we just I didn't have um, a clue that we we're going to be out in the woods for a while, but we were. We started walking and we started noticing we were hearing something staying a good distance from us, but keeping pace with us through the woods. So we we're trying to track it. And like it's trying to I don't know if it's trying to track us, but we we're just pacing through the woods and we're going into areas we've never been before um, around our areas. And we're just trying to track this thing. And we started following this thing and it went on for hours and we finally 
got to the point where like, well, like, we don't really quite know where we're at. We've never been as part of woods. You know, there's residential houses, uh, farmhouses and things. So we said, yeah, we better find a road and at least find out where exactly we're at. We lost the the tracking. He wasn't following us anymore and we couldn't tell where he was at. So we said, let's just go ahead and, and head out. And um, this is a little kind of a funny story. We, find, we finally found a road, got out on the road. And I'm like, well, we don't. We think it's this route, 664, and we start looking around. And I'm like, well, we don't know what route it is, and we don't know which way it is back to where we came from, to the left or to the right. So we said, well, let's just go right, and we'll go down through here. So I, said, I went over and walked to open a mailbox, and at least got an address and a street name. So I looked down. It's like, oh, we're on Route 93. So here we thought we were on 664. So we're like, okay, well, we've got a long ways to walk. Or if you, if, if you guys remember Richard, he's a disabled veteran. He can't really walk a whole lot. Well, we did a lot of walking that night, and it's really starting to get to him. And it's about three, getting 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we got a long walk to get back to uh, where we need to go. So there's cars passing by, and here's a couple guys carrying 45s, standing, walking down the road. And cars go by, and we're trying to wave them down to see if we can hit, catch a ride. Of course, you know, they're not going to stop. So about walking about a half hour down the road, <clears throat> here comes another car. So we uh, pull off side of the road or we walk off side of the road and try to wave him down. Here's the sheriff. So <clears throat> he, of course, turns around, whoops around. And we grab our guns, unload them and all that, make sure, you know, we're safe. We're legal to carry, but um, wanted to be make the, the officer feel safe. And uh, he comes over and said, what are you guys doing out here in the middle of the night walking around here? And so we told him, hey, we're Bigfoot researchers, and we were out doing some research. And, of course, the cop was a very interested, very nice guy, very young, nice guy. And he was on his way home from getting off uh, his, his late-night shift. So he took it upon himself to uh, take us back to, you know, our, where, to our campground where we were. And uh, it, it was about a 15-minute drive for him to take us back. Uh, to get back there and then he come back and we showed him what we we're doing research wise and it was it was interesting he was he was a real nice officer and um but we had a good time and so we had some you know some of our adventures you know out walking around uh doing research you, sometimes you can get a little crazy um out in the woods so we don't know if it was a bigfoot dog man you know or just a, a wild dog up there but whatever it was was following us and we were trying to track it at the same time never got a glimpse of it that's what we we're trying to do um, didn't hear it holler, didn't hear it growl, um, but we did. We did have a good time that evening trying to get through the woods, and we weren't dressed right. You know, I was, uh, Rich was wearing shorts, I was wearing long pants. Rich came out of there all cut up. I was had blood up and down my legs from the you know getting through my pants, and so yeah, we had but we had fun. I think it, to me that's what it's all about too. That's awesome. Oh Great. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't catch me going out at nighttime doing that. I'm gonna. I'm a daytime squatcher. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. You know, yeah, I've got a, I've got another. Um, I think it's on the 14th. I've got another nighttime uh, research with uh, David Wolf. Um, he's he's been researching. He's from Northern Ohio, and um, he's got some things going on up there that uh, he's invited me and another uh, researcher, Jay Fouch, from the Ohio area. Uh, we're going to go up and stay the night up there. He's got some real good activity going up there. He's, he's had some recorders out, had a lot of activity in the area at night. So we're going to go up there and do another night research. Cool. Yeah, Rich invited us to come up there to uh, to take us out. And I'm sure if we did, which I really want to do now at this point, and come to this pit yeah, area that we've heard so much about, I feel like we would we would have some activity. But it's such a weird place. And, and you know, not only – is Bigfoot there? People talk about dog man. And, and I think Rich sent me, sent us that picture that you're talking about of the dog man. He probably did. Yeah. I don't know if we put it on our group page yeah. or not, or you can see some kind of, some kind of head, some kind of dog looking head sticking yeah. up over the bush there. Oh. It's definitely, definitely some kind of creature looking at him. But why do you think Todd, that that area, that Hocking Hills is so famous for sightings and, Dog man, yeah. Bigfoot. Is it just? Are there? Is there so many cave systems there? Is it just? Well, that's the thing. Is the, the, the cave systems in in in, uh, in the Hocking County. Um, they're not really caves. Caves like you. A lot of people think. Oh, you know, we go twenty feet and you turn right, and there's another hundred and eighty yards of, of cave. These are more of just 
um, big, big overhangs. So um, there's not really too many big, big caves that you can crawl back into. So it, it's hard to say um, why they're there. Now, Hocking Hills is one of the most beautiful areas. Um, I used to run the camera club down there for the uh, Friends of Hocking Hills. And um, we would go around and photograph you know, the, all the waterfalls and all the, all the uh, landscaping out there. And there's a lot of stuff that the public can see, but there's also a lot of pro- still on private property that a lot of people can't get to. So I think that, um, you know, with, with the structures, the land landscape down through there is probably a good place for them to, to hang out and hide in. Um, but as far as being deep in the caves and things like that, I, I don't know. Um, but there are places, um, actually, uh, we have a skeptic in our group now. We just hired in a skeptic uh, or brought in a skeptic. He's an old friend of uh, Richard's, and he's one of the guys that said, I don't believe in Bigfoot, <laughs> um, which is great because we you know, we have a skeptic in our group, and every time we see something or hear something, we go to him and say, well, well this is what we think it is. What do you think it is? And, you know, we've, we've kind of blown his mind a couple times on <laughs> things at night. Um and but one of the things when we were walking through the pit the last time we were down there, um, he was using a walking stick. And one of the things that he noticed, um, a lot of hollow air sounding areas when he pounds his stick on the ground that we've been walking this whole time. There's certain areas where you can hear it. and It's like, yeah, it sounds like it's kind of hollow. Now, it's a lot of sandstone uh, down through there. So, you know, that would give you a good cave system uh, underneath something. Um, but, yeah, you could hear that. And so now it makes you think, oh. Well, I wonder if there is an entrance that we don't know about to a big underground cave system that it's a possible possibility. That's where a lot of creatures are hanging at. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he he noticed that on standing up on an area and he started doing that down through there. And he found three or four areas where it sounded hollow. You know, you you got to stamp a stick on the ground and you're just going to hear the stick. But this was you can hear. thump thump, thump, And it's like, wow, that never, never occurred to us. Um, so yeah, it was kind of interesting to, that to him to find that, and we should, he, so that's now it's, I think it's going to be one of our things we do, and then we go to an area we're going to start at least checking for that too. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice if you guys did come down. Um, we'd ha- be more than happy to to have you guys out. We um, have uh, started doing actual tours. We call them our Bigfoot tours. Um, what we've been doing is inviting the public. We, we don't charge anything. Um, to come out and go go on on a tour with us. Basically, Rich is uh, in a teaching mode. Um, he brings you out. We take you to areas that we um, have researched. We have found things, and um, all the tours we've done, we've done. We did two tours in the early uh, in the earlier the part of the year. Um, they were successful. The first tour we did, we found a fresh dog foot print, a uh, dog band print. Um, it was mm-hmm. eleven inches wide, eleven inches. Wow. Um, and um, the next tour we did was a month later, and we um, we found Bigfoot. Actually, one of the guys in the tour, we didn't see it. We were t- taking him to a spot, and he looked up a creek bed and saw a Bigfoot print. We found three Bigfoot prints going up at, at uh, uh, Creek. And then we just did a tour two weeks ago, two weekends ago, and um, we found um, some Bigfoot tracks up, the, up in that area also. So they're still there, you know. Um, and the tours are, are very successful. Uh, people are coming; they come out. They love them. Um, they enjoy it. They learn things. So Rich's idea is he takes them out. We show them what to look for, so they can go out and look for it themselves. Um, he teaches them a little bit about wood talk. Um, if you guys, uh, I know you, he's talked about that with you. Guys. Yeah, we talked about that with him. Um, Rich is very knowledgeable on wood talk, and uh, a little story about that. Uh, last the last tour we did. David had David has been research for his um, his movie. And uh, like I said, he's a videographer, so he's doing a documentary. And so he's always talking to other people. And somebody has sent him a picture or he actually had a picture of a structure. Um, and uh, he showed Rich that structure or the uh, the picture when he was on that tour last week, two weeks ago. Rich knew right away. He said, oh, that that's telling me that there's a there's a big hill down through this way, um, big mountain or hill, and there's a set of railroad tracks on the other side of it. Just by looking at that structure, that that layout of wood talk, hmm. and David, was, David said it blew his mind because that's exactly what was in that area. There was um, where that structure was laid out at. There was a there was a big hill, and on the other side of that hill was a set of railroad tracks. Rich had no idea where that came from, what where it was taken from. 
he just showed him that photo um, of the wood talk. And Rich was able to read it and tell him tell him about the, about the, the area that he was, you know, where it came from. So wow. you know, that kind of blew Dave's mind. And uh, so Rich is definitely knows his wood talk. Um, he probably can't tell you everything that, that, you know, that they have, but he definitely understands what they're, what they have and, and uh, what's out there. Well, yeah, we're definitely going to have to uh, set something up probably for spring. Yeah, that'd be good down there. Yeah, that'd be real good. I'd like to have yeah. you guys come out, have a good time. Yeah, we'll stay in touch with you. We'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Because I definitely want to get down there. I know Todd does, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Robin, you want to go, too? Come on. And then we'll get Robin. Yeah, come on down. we get Robin to come out east and come with us. Yeah. Where am I going? Ohio. 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 Okay. Hocking Hills, Ohio. Yep. It's one of southern, the most, southern part of Ohio. One of the most famous areas for Bigfoot sightings. Yep. We'll stay in touch, and we'll we'll get this all planned out for. I for, think that sounds like um, something I should do. Oh, it's, it's definitely. Should. And if anything, I, it, I just it, added it to my bucket list, Todd. Okay, yeah, all right. Good. There we good. Go. <laughs> if anything, it's just a beautiful sight to see, anyways. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's one of the most beautiful areas in Southern Ohio. So, yeah. Well, thank you for that, Robin. Do you have anything else for Todd before we wrap up? You know, I don't, uh, but I sure have enjoyed hearing your stories. Well, I, I didn't you, think I'd I had enough there to tell you guys, about. but thinking back through, we definitely have a lot of experiences that we like yeah, to share. Yeah, I mean, and that's why we, we do the yeah. tours, too. You know, we want people and once to you sat down and you start talking about it, you start thinking of more stuff, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I did do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, but we'd be glad to have you guys come out and, and uh, take you on the tour. We'll take you to the pit. Um, we'll see if we can get, um, maybe at that time, maybe get permission to stay the night at the pit again, guys, you know, oh, if, if you're God. free enough for it. Uh, <laughs> easy there. He we'll, easy, buddy. We'll yeah, talk baby about steps, that. Baby we'll, steps. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll that's baby that. steps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wake up, have a dog man breathing down my face. Yeah. No kidding. I don't know yeah. about that. That's. Mm-mm. Todd, it was great having you on, man. It was a pleasure that having was. you with us tonight and, uh, telling your stories. That it was, was it was awesome. great to be on. I really appreciate you guys inviting me, and I hope that um, you know, my stories bring some uh, you know some information to people, and um, that's what we're here about is to, to try to do that. So, I am looking forward to maybe seeing you guys in person, maybe next spring. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we will definitely plan on that. Okay, for sure. Definitely do some tours. Yeah, All right. we'll stay in touch, okay. and we'll let you know for sure. I was All gonna right. say. I was I'm gonna good. say real quick. I was checking out the HCCR uh, Hocking County cryptid researchers so you guys make sure you look that up hccr on facebook i like the uh, logo that's really cool you've got oh, the you. uh, the bigfoot uh, walking yep. a dog oh. man uh, oh, yeah that is dog, cool man. and if you notice bigfoot's got a tattoo of the ufo too oh you look. yeah he does <laughs> that's awesome man yeah that was uh, a little rich cool richard logo. and i we sat down and drew that up one night that's cool <laughs> That's yeah, really uh, cool. Okay. That's on right. Facebook. But, uh, yeah, you can do that. HCCR.us will get you there also. Awesome. Okay. Right, well, cool. I'm going to do that here in a little while. Cool. All right. Robin. Hey guys, thanks for having me on as a co host. This was fun. Yes. Oh, it was our pleasure, pleasure, Robin. Robin. I'm glad you're thank on. You. It, was, it was good talking with you. Todd, thank, thank you. you again. And uh, you guys will talk to you soon. All right. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. It was a great you guys time. Take care. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, it was great having Todd on, hearing about the encounters and everything experienced. And yeah, and having Robin, too. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Having her co-host with us, she did a really great job mm-hmm. asking questions. So it was kind of nice. So again, if uh, you know you guys go in and uh, join our Patreon, Patreon page, remember which level it is, but you can be a co-host on one of the shows if you sign up. It's great having Robin on. I can't wait to bring her. Yeah, it was. She was fun. All right, well, with that, we'll wrap this up and uh, get out of here and call it a night. We say, Brian. Yep. See you.